Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back my dear friends and dear students, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are. And uh, this is the DADM2 which is data analysis and decision making 2 course under the NPTEL MOOC series. And as you know this was total course is basically for, um, for 12 weeks and which is 30 hours of contact over the, um, uh, the lecture series and which is 60 lectures in total because each lecture is for half an hour and we have already completed 11 uh, weeks each week with 7 lectures and after each week you had assignments. And if you can see the number here it is the 60 DMDM to lecture number 60 which is the 12 week that means we are going to wrap up this course with this lecture. And, um, uh, and obviously after this lecture you will do basically take an ass um, this um, assignment number 12 and with that you will basically have the final examination also which covers the whole course. If you remember we are discussing about the concept of ANN very briefly then we went to the concept of change point detection also briefly and we just mentioned the type of test. So petit test would be utilized considering the concept that we want to basically ch check the points under the um, man Whitney concept of test which we will consider where we are using two things. I will just give a very brief uh, two minute uh, discussion which I actually do before the starting of the class. So you have the ANN we, we, um, methods will be utilized because prediction of um, uh, exchange rate is, is a, is a non-parameter method because we do not know which parameters based on which you can predict the, the um, exchange rate. And as I said there can be different parameters which change and what is the fluctuation also we do not know. It can be petroleum price, gold price, silver price, it can be inflation rate, it can be interest rate of that country, it can be interest rate of other countries, whatever it is. What is the GDP, GNP, population? There can be many objective and subjective criteria. Say for example, suddenly there is a political upheaval in one country. So obviously it will have an effect on the, on the the exchange rate. Consider this an election. Now we'll, we basically would try to predict using the artificial neural network. The prices are there, we would like to predict. But the actual prediction is, is, is not the main concern. Our main concern is to find out the change point depending on where we can take a decision whether you want to enter the exchange rate market or come out of that. Added to that, we will try to basically fine tune our, our ANN uh, network based on this either the uh, the conjugate gradient um, uh, concept method and to top it all we will basically utilize the ANN and, and uh, ANN along with the conjugate one with genetic algorithm similar to handling. And we will try to utilize this combination for two sets. One is the change point detection algorithm being utilized and another case the change point al algorithm not being utilized. Obviously when we when you run any method or, re uh, or tests you have some criteria based on which you want to basically analyze how good or bad your results are. Like so if some of the results I will just briefly mention them is the mean square error where we try to predict the actual value, difference of the actual value and the, and the predicted value and find out the square of that and find out the average. So this is something to do with trying to minimize that um, mean square error is something to do with minimizing the variance because there is a square term and you are trying to find out the average. The mean absolute error is that we find out the errors in any direction and try to basically give the weightages of plus. Um, so that means any negative or positive in, in, um, direction methods are all are considered positive. Then again we find out the expected value. The direction accuracy uh, one is basically that uh, depending on the actual value and the predicted value uh, for the time period next i plus 1 whether if it is both are positive you give a point of um, 1 and if bo both are negative also you give a point of 1. So the, in the direction that the predictions is which is happening in the actual, actual value now and the predicted value later on and the actual value later on. 
So, if the difference between the actual value then that means t plus 1 and t and difference between the predictor value of t plus 1 and the actual value of t if they are moving in the same direction that means we are trying to predict in the right direction. If it is more positive the first one is positive first one means the difference between y t plus 1 and y t and the second difference between y t plus 1 hat and y t if both are positive then it is plus 1 both are negative that means I am going in the negative direction my prediction is also right then also it is positive. If they are in opposite direction that means it's actually it is going plus in the in it is increasing and I am giving a prediction on decreasing or vice versa then obviously the a value would be negative. We will try to basically find out the direction accuracy on an average. The Pearson correlation coefficient and Thiel's coefficient of in inequality would be utilized depending Pearson correlation coefficient we know is basically very simply the correlation coefficient which we use in the concept of covariances. And the Thiel's co coefficient in inequality would be the root mean squared error uh, divided by the, 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 the prediction value which is happening for two time periods n minus 1 depending on the, uh, the value of the degrees of freedom which we already have considered. So, now we basically take the US dollar to Indian rupees and US dollar to UK pound the exchange rates and they are taking from 2000 to 2009 from 1st January to 17th of February. And here you see the exchange rate of US to Indian spot rate. So, say for example, you may say, well, Victoria I think there is a there is a change point here, or there is a change point here, or is the change point here, maybe a change point here, maybe a change point here. So, this total time frame is capital T, and we will basically try to find out if this is tau 1, this is tau 2, this is tau 3, this is tau 4, and so on and so forth. So, pictorial what you are seeing, we will try to basically verify it using the and then added to that the conjugate gradient method plus the genetic algorithm and the simulator handling method. So, we find out the using the time series concept the lags and the autocorrelation. So, the subgroups are based on the fact. So, we have basically the data set of 2383 data points. So, we have the subgroups from 1 to 595 data point, 596 to 1192, 1193 to 1788, this should be 1189. So, 1189 to 2383, based on that the subgroups are, are calculated and we find out the auto correlated values of the US to the Indian spot rate for the source 4 subgroups based on which you can divide and then proceed. Subgroups you remember I mentioned that if you want to predict standing from rotate one year down the line, there would be time points in between where we want to enter the market or come out of the market and, and take a decision accordingly. So, those sub, sub points or subgroups where the data change point is happening, we want to check that. That is why we are divided into, into subgroups. The configuration of the various models is shown below for the US in, uh, Indian uh, exchange rate. So, the number of hidden rays for the ok. Now, remember if we had mentioned that uh, the model which we will try to use obviously, we do some learning methods learning means we find out the optimum number of nodes and the hidden layers. So, the number of hidden nodes which is there for the neural network in the conjugate gradient method is 6. The, uh, the nodes configuration for the genetic algorithm being utilized with conjugate uh, gradient method I am not considering them singly I am basically singly in the sense not ANN using the genetic algorithm or ANN using simulator and handling. So, the, the nodes are basically 11 cross 10 into 6 and 9 cross 12 into 8. So, the summary of these results are as follows. So, this learning of how the nodes are built up I skip that and come to the results ac accurately. So, this is the uh, spot exchange rate depending on uh, from 2000 to 2009 which we already considered. Now, the metric for comparison for these using the neural network conjugate gradient method, genetic algorithm, simulator handling, genetic algorithm and, and um, conjugate gradient method and, and simulator handling using conjugate gradient method. The all the statistics are given. Statistics means the, the matrix based on which we are going to say how good or bad our predictions are. We use the mean squared, the mean absolute error, 
the direction accuracy, the Pearson coefficient and the thin, thin Thiel's inequality coefficient. So, the values come out of uh, this. For the mean square, it is 10 to the power minus 2, 7. This is 8 into 10 to the power, uh, 7, 10, 7 into 10 to the power minus 3, sorry. This is 8 into 10 to the power minus 2. This is direct accuracy is 7 into 10 to the power minus 1. Pearson coefficient is about 1 and Thiel's inequality coefficient is about 1 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, all the values basically are given depending on the performance of the 5 models. Now, here if you remember that the points which are marked arbitrarily, now when I do the, 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 the change point detection depending on the Pettit test and when I find out the change points for the US and the Indian rupees are happening like this. So, I have not marked at exactly what point. So, the change point is happening round about uh, 600 point, 600 data point. Another is happening say for example, 3 points are happening between 1000 to 1500. One is happening say for example, at the range of 1700 and the one another one is happening at the range of about 2000. So, in all from 2000 to 2009, uh, if I take the data point, so that the number of change points is basically 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Even though it looks that a lot of data points change at change point is happening, but here we predict the change point is 6 in number. Now, performance of the metric based on the change. So, initially the change point was not utilized algorithm, now you use the change point and the mean square the absolute mean square errors, the direction accuracy, Pearson coefficient values are given. I am not going to the details of the discussion on the values. Now, I want to basically give the summary of the mean square errors. So, I have grouped them into two groups. One is without change point detection algorithm, one is with change point detection algorithm. But here, we will basically have the without the change point detection algorithm which is happening is conjugate gradient method, genetic algorithm, simultaneous handling and then utilizing conjugate CGM, conjugate gradient method along with SA and conjugate gradient method along with GA. Similarly, when I use the change point, again the same sequence, we use uh, neural network with uh, change point detection and conjugate gradient method, then genetic algorithm with change point detection, simultaneous handling with change point detection and finally, the neural network which considers change point gradient method genetic algorithm and the last one being change point, change uh, gradient method and similar to handling. So, the errors would basically give me which is the best. If you check generally, so they are very low on the scale of um, uh, mean square error. So, the best which is coming out to be if I consider through the pictorial one is the generic algorithm being used with change point gradient method. Uh, without change point and the um, conjugate gradient method. Another one, the best one is coming out to be the conjugate gradient method along with general algorithm and the change point one. So, the error is the best here, error in the least sense. So, results for the arma Gartz model, if we use the, the mean square. So, we can compare these results with, along with the results which we get for the different combinations of the of the change point and not change point method being utilized in the ANN along with GR or an essay. Okay, now, uh, I have just given a snapshot of the discussions which we had. So, I will try to wrap up this, this um, DADM 2. So, I will go through. So, if I consider, I will go very briefly. So, this is the, the set of slides which you have discussed. So, the first one what we discussed was basically the concept of utility theory. So, in utility theory and utility analysis, we did uh, the concept of different type of um, absolute utility um, concept, the, the relative utility concept and the absolute utility uh, concept being utilized. Then we found out uh, or tried try to discuss the concept of non cessation and the risk aversion properties. Then we considered the four different types of utility function, quadratic power then the concept of um, uh, exponential utility function, log logarithmic utility function, then we discussed different examples, then we went to the very simple concept of 
how we can find out uh, the safety first principle can be utilized uh, where you want to maximize or minimize the functional form. And uh, then we consider the ex expected utility obviously you can find out and then we consider the concept of uh, rather than discussing through the slides I am just um, mentioning what we have covered. Then we consider the, uh, the safety first principle which I did repeat. So, they were different um, then we consider the geometric main method and comparison the geometric method with the generally the safety first principle and I did also mention that using the quadratic utility function also means that the uh, returns was normal and vice versa. So, this is the two way impl implications for that. So, then uh, I will I'll close and open the slides accordingly. So, I will close this also. So, it is easier for us to discuss. So, in the next one, we discuss the concept of uh, considering the utility functions. The certainty value was important, you should do not definitely know that. Then we considered how you find out the certainty value and how the expected values can be found out. Then we went into the problems of certainty value and how it can be compared, how, how certainty value can be utilized to comparing different decisions. Then the mean variance concept along with the utility analysis was done, the, the, the safety first principle the, and, and the stochastic dominance concept, the geometric mean concept were discussed. Then we discussed the, the concepts of utility function, loss functions then the concept of loss functions being consistent unbiased mass properties then we have the quadratic loss function the the uh, mod loss function with unequal penalties being there for overestimation underestimation both for the for both for the uh, linear part and the nonlinear part also then we consider the linux loss function where uh, overestimation underestimations were can be prioritized and i give you three examples Mm, then uh, we considered uh, very briefly the balance loss function uh, which was considered a part and parcel of multiple linear regression and how it can be utilized. Then we consider the data environment analysis, in data environment analysis we consider that what is input bundle, output bundle, what is the decision making unit and how increasing, decreasing and constant return to skills we will have three different diagrams based on which you can find out the maximization and minimization of the problem which can be converted into linear form. And uh, <coughs> then we, we covered the concepts I am this is I think this is the DA part I will try to. So, this is the DA part we already considered. So, this is no, no need of repeating it. So, this went on for quite long, long means the number of lectures. So, they are basically being saved and, and given a concept based on the lectures. Mm, then we consider the concept of decision trees. This was an in where we considered the probability of success failure, then for the drills and how they can you can utilize the concept of expected value variance to rank the decisions if both are to be considered how you can take the ratio of the expected value to variance and rank them from the highest to the lowest or you want to take the ratio of variance to the expected value rank them from the lowest to the highest. So, we did ex consider examples accordingly and we and I did mention that considering that utility values are negative we will definitely take some of the problems where utility values will be considered 0 in order to compare, compare the models even though negative values are possible. <coughs> then we consider the concept of AHP analytical hierarchy process and how the hierarchies are there, how the probabilities could be multiplied and how you can utilize the concept of eigenvalues, eigenvectors to find out the ranking, consistency ratio, consistency ranking and based on that how you can basically rank the decision process. I gave you examples that if you are trying to buy a house or buy a car, there are objective and subjective values also. And in ANN you will should basically consider and uh, so, uh, sorry, analytic hierarchy process you should consider the weights to be in such a way that they can be in a scale of 1 to 9 with odd numbers or they can be in the even numbers also. So, highest value being the liking and disliking being such that if A1 is compared to A2, these are the alternatives and if A1 gets a point of 9, so A2 would basically get a point of 1 by 9 that means I dislike it and based on that you basically multiply those values in order to get the ranking system. 
then uh, if I um, uh, if I go to then for the sixth uh, these numbers which are given are the weak number. So, then we went into electro method and electro method we will only consider one of the methods. Then we considered the concept of uh, the in electro epsilon electro also where the liking disliking in the inter inference sets were there in the initial method or electro method you have the concordance in discordance sets liking and disliking and club them in the sets and basically rank them and found all the values in the epsilon electro values we basically had the again as I as I mentioned few seconds back liking disliking in the indifference sets as that together basically they constitute the whole universal set and based on that we can do the ranking and you can find out the liking set disliking set and the indifference set based on which we can compare whether alternative a1 is better than a2 or a2 is better than a3 and you remember that when you are trying to basically combine this concordance discordance and indifference set we are trying to take all the criteria into consideration such that collectively they was they would give a, a overall decision based on all the criteria when we are comparing alternatives with respect to each other uh, and obviously uh, here how you do the normalization is important depending on the utility function normalization if you remember i did mention time and again uh, if normalization you are doing along the row or along the column remember to check the values is 1 because if you consistently follow the row 1 or the column 1 do that accordingly for all steps point 1. Point number 2 I also mentioned that if you are trying to change the utility function in between that would not be possible technically when you are solving the problem because different people would may have different utility functions as the age as the income changes as the risk preference changes but we are not going to consider that in a analysis of the problem. Then late in the seventh week like set of lectures we consider the, the concept of topsis method. In the topsis method the, the it was basically the center of distance of the liking and the disliking. How far it is from the liking point median point which is the liking set and, and the disliking set based on that again we differentiated again I mentioned the concept of utility function again I mentioned about having a weighted matrix which could be normalized based on that uh, we can multiply the priority values or the values which are assigned for each decision eight alternatives and then rank them accordingly. Uh, in the eighth lecture eight week of lecture we consider the Weicker method Again, the Weicker method are is exactly similar to the same to, to the electra and the topsis method, but the algorithm based on which you will basically rank them would be different. And I did discuss one of the algorithms in details in one of the methods. Based on that, you can build up the models everywhere. And I also discussed the difference between the M, in this multi criteria decision making Weicker and topsis, how the vector normalization could be done, and how they can be utilized. Then uh, in the ninth week lecture we considered MAUT and MAUT, the multi attribute utility theory and multi attribute um, the utilities being, being considered where utilities could be added or uh, depending on the functional form and I did here there were no problems it was just a general concept. In the tenth week it was more to do with the concept of robust optimization reliability and how the concept of, of utilities could be utilized or the concept of multi criteria decision making can be utilized from the objective function. It was more of a very conceptual idea where problems can be solved but trying to basically develop the problem you have to basically write the code. I am not I, I did mention that I am not going to go into the detail of the solution method it will be considered in the DADM 3. And then uh, we considered in the 11th lecture we considered the different concept of, of a GERT method the general evaluation review technique and, and Q, Q GERT method and we considered the concept of OR network and network and how they can be combined to come with the different scenarios. Here looping was allowed where PERT and CPM do not consider looping. And in the 12th lecture we considered the artificial immune system the, the, the ANN method and tried to combine uh, give a um, uh, example in area of finance, very simple area of finance where uh, bankruptcy prediction was important and they can you can achieve better results using AIS and in the artificial neural network we considered the prediction and of the change point in, uh, in uh, foreign currency exchange considering two different heuristic method with genetic algorithm and similar analogy. Uh, with this I will uh, like to say thank 
thank you all for all your attention and the amount of energy and the time you have spent for doing this course. If you have any queries, you are most welcome to write it to the tutors and if personally you think you want to further your knowledge in this field, you can definitely write to my email ID. You can check the net and basically find my email ID and write to me. I'll, I, I, I generally would definitely reply with all the details as may be required. Have a good day and best of luck for your future. Thank you very much.